Well, welcome back, you Plain Party people. We have come to a milestone in the presentations. I figured we would stop, take a pause from introducing new concepts and material, and let's do a review. Let's have a flashcard session. We're talking about the south sectors today, sectors two and eight in San Juan Center's airspace. And in the spirit of being open-ended, the sandbox style that we have implemented the past couple presentations, we present to you an opportunity to use what you've learned, what you have stored up on your tool belt and your toolbox, and throw it at a session, or at least a scenario, freeze frame. It's not fluid and dynamic as the real thing, but you will have an opportunity at least to have dialogue with the pilots with some dialogue boxes, and have an opportunity to see uh, how far you've come and uh, what you can react to, uh, you know, traffic-wise. So let's get to the bulleted list and let's just dive into this fun, interactive, open-ended presentation today. All right, flash dance. What a feeling, what a great 80s hit to be the title of our bulleted list for this presentation. It's the only bulleted list we'll see. You'll see the succeeding strips are nothing but little traffic scenarios, freeze frame shots of live traffic in one of the sectors. So let's review what we have learned so far. It's a great opportunity. We're taking a pause, just like I said in the title slide, and we are going to let you just have at it, right? React to the aircraft dialog box. You'll see something written in red, and if it's applicable, it points to you in a direction maybe for you to say something. It might motivate or prompt a response from you, and other traffic situations might be glaringly obvious to you, and you'll have a chance to react without having a cue or a uh, dialogue box pop up. But think outside the box. What is presented to you? Uh, this is an opportunity for you to take it as far as you want uh, with frequency changes, phraseology practice, weather calls, traffic calls, anything you want. You can even apply things that are outside of the dialogue boxes uh, aim, you know, so it'll be fantastic for you. Uh, go ahead and find work to do. You might think to yourself, uh, we have always talked about finding priorities or prioritizing what you'll say, who you'll call. Now, this might be a good opportunity for you to think, hey, what should my priorities be? At least start having that internal conversation with yourself between the two sides of your brain saying, what is more important to me at this time, knowing what we have learned together so far? So think of what you'd like to get accomplished first, second, and so on, right? Plan A, B, C, and down the line. There's roughly about eight to about 11 aircraft in the sector at a time in these situations, so it won't be overly crowded. And some of these examples will be, as I said before, glaringly obvious to you, which is good because we are still in the fundamental stages here. And it's only a freeze frame. It's only a picture. It's not moving. It's not like you can give a clearance. Go say something else. Scan back and see how the situation is developing, how your plan is evolving. Well, we can't do that. We don't have that luxury here. But we can at least practice the fundamentals, which we have always focused on, the fun aspect of fundamentals here, for you to take to the lab or to the live radar environment, and you'll be able to use those. And the phraseology and the plans will become second nature to you. Then you could get lost in the woods with the more complex stuff as complexity builds in a live and lab environment, which is fine. But if you can take care of this stuff, clean this up, have it polished for when you enter the lab or the live environment, well, you'll be much farther ahead. So, ready, set, let's go. Let's get to the sector. I am not going to be here. I will narrate uh, what is going on. We'll pause and we'll go over each one just to give you a little preview of the dialogue boxes if there are some. And then we'll pause and then we'll talk about it at the end of the sector, what I would do as a, a controller being plugged in at the position at that point in time. So this should be a fantastic time. It's a refined method on our flashcard series. We've only had one other one. It was really, really long. This one will be short and we'll keep it going as we learn more and produce more of these flashcards so you have some variety and see different things. So let's have a great time. No pressure. Take your time. Be confident and you uh, are here to get better. So let's do it together. I will see you at the next slide. So welcome back to Sector 8, you awesome plane party people. 
northwest corner of Sector 8, the hotbed of activity, a bee's nest of aircraft of different types, both IFR and VFR, with Maiguez, Ponce, and Brinken all being located there, Brinken obviously having the tower there. And it's a hotbed of activity because we are between the island of Puerto Rico and the Dominican Republic, and Punta Cana is really close by, so we get a whole bunch of aircraft transitioning this area, which makes it a lot of fun. But how this will work is I will stay with you and expose the dialog boxes if there are for the certain aircraft who have something to say to you. And then at the end of that, we'll pause real quick and we'll come back and I'll tell you what I would do. Okay, so let's go over the first uh, people who are chirping up. San Juan Center, care 55, six miles east, mind glitch, VFR San Juan. Okay. Nurse 745 Kilo Delta Cross File 380. Okay. Traffic in sight, Transit 7178. So, pause the video now and we'll come back and let's talk. So, here we are back again. I'm sure you did a fantastic job de determining what you wanted to say, and I'm sure you found a perfect phrase that fits. But let's go over what I would say, and maybe this would help you out formulate your plan. So my priorities right off the bat, there is nothing affecting air traffic safety right now that needs my attention, my immediate uh, command of the frequency. So I'm just going to go as the calls came, first come, first serve. Care 55 called me six miles east of Maiguez via far to San Juan. That's perfect. I can use a primary means of radar identification, position verification to radar identify the aircraft. And the only thing I would have to do is obviously type in the information to get a squat code so I could see a full data block on the aircraft and validate their mode C. So what I would say is Care 55 San Juan Center radar contact, say altitude leaving, standby for squawk. I would not want to overload the pilot on all that information. I would go right back and say CARE 55, traffic 2 to 3 o'clock, 7 miles, northwest bound, Skyhawk, VFR 3500. And if it's traffic for one, it's traffic for the other. Skyhawk 6 Romeo, traffic 11 to 12 o'clock, 7 miles, northeast bound, twin Cessna. I'm inferring it's twin Cessna. That's just a little bit of... Uh, institutional knowledge, little expectation bias that it's a twin Cessna off of uh, my Aguez. Twin Cessna, 2,200 climbing, and they would respond. Perfect. You took care of that situation. You would continue to advise the aircraft as they made their way to each of their respective destinations. November 745 Kilo Delta. You know what? I don't want to force this aircraft to have to climb an exorbitant rate, not to mention that they look kind of tangled up with Delta 722 transitioning northbound. So I would say November 745 Kilo Delta, standby traffic, 12 o'clock, 40 miles opposite direction, Boeing 737, file 370. Additional traffic, 11 o'clock, 40 miles northbound, Boeing 737, level 380. So that kind of paints the picture. Hey, 38 is not quite available now because there's an aircraft occupying it. And also, to, I don't want to force you to go up to 38 at an exorbitant rate. So you also have traffic at 37 passing them. And you can also give traffic for Caribbean. They have two traffic calls to be made, right? Caribbean's 457, traffic 2 o'clock. 22 miles, northbound Boeing 737, file additional traffic 12 o'clock, 45 miles, opposite direction, Challenger, flight level 360. Good, you took care of that. Now, going further, I, as you see, I didn't obviously, res I responded to 745 Kilo Delta, but look, my eyes are already scanning with that Copa 142. Now, you don't know this since we don't have strips. I figured the strips wouldn't be exactly useful to you at the sector because they would just take up more space so you could see the whole uh, sector in its detail and uh, the best pixelation possible. So Copa 142, we know land San Juan. They're on Lima 221, judging by the course the aircraft is taking. Copa 142, cross Josh, it's seven, at maintain 7,000 at 210 knots, the San Juan altimeter, you know, so on and so forth. Now, look at this, traffic in sight, translate 7178, perfect. If you see, I have, I do not have FedEx 57 heavy cleared on the approach yet, or else I'd see approach in the assigned altitude section of the data block. So let's make it official. FedEx 57 heavy, cross talk about 3,000, cleared RNAV runway approach. They would read it back. 
Traffic Insight, Translo 710, perfect, everything worked out. Translo 7170, follow the heavy Boeing 767, cleared visual approach runway 8, so on and so forth. And then I would also hit him back, maybe even that initial call up or now. Translo 778, caution wake turbulence, 11 miles in trail to a heavy Boeing 767. AC, great job with that. Uh, that's everything that was intended. You can obviously practice your uh, traffic calls. You can practice your radar service termination phraseology. Radar, FedEx 57 heavy radar service terminated. Contact Agua Dia Tower 124.9 or 5. Agua Dia RA position report. Uh, 220 south west of the field. Trans Los 178. Uh, visual approach runway following FedEx 57 heavy. You know, something like that. Uh, Care 55. Contact sound approach 109.4. Uh, November 6, 96, Romeo, Agua the Airport, 12 o'clock, two to three miles, report the field in sight, right, if you want to keep white following that aircraft. So, uh, yeah, that's everything that was intended. So let's go to the next slide. Great job with that, everybody. Still focusing on that northwest corner of Sector 8. Let's get right to it. Sam Juan, November 5070, Juliet, VFR, Brinken, field in sight. Okay, so obviously that must be their initial check-in. Sam Juan, jumped with 668, climbing 7,000, also what seems to be an initial check-in. Sam Juan, Peach 44, 3,200, climbing 5,000, Route 4, also an initial check-in. So, also, JetBlue 1938, requesting lower. Very respectable. So let's pause it, do your thing, and we'll be back together and talk about it. So if you paused it, welcome back. I'm sure you did another fantastic job, stand-up job, knowing the things we did. Yet again, nothing here is adamant or going to compromise air safety if I don't take any action. So I'll go first come, first served again. So 5070 Juliet said they had the field in sight, but I have Peach 3, I'm sorry, Peach 4-4. Uh, climbing and they did a great check-in. So I'm not really worried about Peach 44. It looks like they're turning to join Route 4 to avoid any conflict. I would give a traffic advisory to 5070 Juliet and also verify since they called up. This is their initial contact us. I would verify they had the ATIS. So I would say uh, Baron 5070 Juliet San Juan Center. Information India Current Agua Dia Altimeter 3001. Traffic 11 o'clock. Uh, one seven miles turning south eastbound heavy kc 135 3200 and that would be enough for them to do it yet again you could also throw in a weight caution weight turbulence cautionary advisory too but you could do that in a subsequent maybe they say they do have information india and i'd be like uh bear seven zero juliet roger caution weight turbulence and maybe point out the peach 44 again so JetBlue 668 is climbing 7,000. Looks like they are probably on the will for departure procedure. And they do have a bit of traffic. There is some conflicting head-on traffic, Peach 44 flying Route 4. So let's not give direct yet. As we learned when we did our Ponce video, it might be best to leave them on the will front and let them climb. Because also, too, we have JetBlue 1938 on Green 633. And at my guess, they'll join Route 12, the Joshi. So if we turn JetBlue 668 on course, which is going to be the Barinkin transition on the Wilfred II, which they probably filed, we should just keep the aircraft on the SID and let them climb so we can get JetBlue 1938 lower and get Peach 44 higher and climb them with complete peace of mind. Now, Peach 44 also looks kind of tangled up with JetBlue 1938 at Joshi. That very well could may be, but Think of it this way. If you leave the aircraft on the route, you now have a common point of conflict that both JetBlue 1938 and Peach 44 share. It's Joshi. So now you can at least determine having the aircraft pointed at a common point to see if they are a factor. You can use aircraft characteristics here too. Peach 44 is a heavy four-engined aircraft. JetBlue 1938 is an E-190 who also wants to get down, and Peach 44 wants to get up. Peach 44 is fully capable of climbing around 5,000 to 6,000 feet a minute. So you can even use an educated guess and monitor the situation and try to swap them. And that takes care of what we have brewing around the Joshi Mayaguez area, leaving JetBlue 668 on the SID 
climbing Peach 44 and descending JetBlue 1938, giving them their crossing restriction. So other things that are at play here, Clearing them 421, we'll need a traffic call with TAM 8186, 37, and 38. And Iberia 6339, um, even though you don't have the flight plan in front of you, they are on a random route off of Sato. So you could pretend they're going to Kika, maybe Opal, maybe Daywin on some kind of random route, maybe verify the aircraft, you know, make up whatever you'd like to, and also give traffic too, because they're pointed pretty much equidescent at TAM 8186, and it'd be great to practice a traffic call uh, there. So, and you can, like I said at the beginning, take this a step further. You can pretend that the targets have moved. You can practice your termination techniques, your frequency changes, um, your directs, practice another traffic call for JetBlue and JetBlue 1938, JetBlue 668 and Peach 44. You can pretend that the situation is, uh, is evolving or maybe it's deteriorating. You need to vector Peach 44 out to the east after they cross 70 Juliet's path, whatever you want to do. Try to uh, project and imagine where the aircraft are and you can really uh, get some more out of this situation, okay? So great job with that. Let's keep moving on. Now we have an extended view, all of Sector 8 in its entirety and a traffic situation brewing here as well. So let's get right to the dialog boxes. San Juan Center, or just San Juan, November 288 Sierra X-ray off Ponce, request IFR to San Juan. Oh, boom, oh look, we do have a strip on the aircraft. Good, okay, so something brewing up there. San Juan Center, Marriott 8341, Niner South Scapa, okay. Requesting lower American 1293, Requesting lower Tampa 3455. They land Agua Dio. All right. Let's pause it. All right, welcome back. If you took that pause, and like I said, I'm sure you did a fantastic job. So let's go first come, first serve. Yet again, nothing imminent brewing here that would affect air traffic safety. So let's go first come, first serve. It was November 288 CRX-ray off Ponce, a pop-up IFR. They're squawking 1200. They did not give us enough information here to be radar identified right off the bat, which is fine. So they're squawking VFR, so they are maintaining VFR. But let's make it completely legal. We have the flight plan in front of us. It's a fine flight plan, direct, but luckily it's over a coordination fix, right? It's over a gate for coordination purposes and LOA purposes, or SOP purposes rather. So nothing precludes us, November 288 Sierra X-ray, San Juan Center, IDENT, November 288 Sierra X-ray, say position, say altitude, right? Let's get this aircraft radar identified. Or November 288 Sierra X-ray, squawk 5511 and IDENT. Nice, since they have been giving a SWAT code, or we can at least get them radar identified. They are at 5,500. We would obviously verify that mode C somehow, right, in one of our transmissions. And one of the things we would have to do is to make sure that they are able to provide their own terrain and instruction avoidance above 6,600 due to that area around Ponce. The MVA around Ponce is 6,600, and they filed for 7,000, so they need to just provide their own VFR conditions, make sure they're able to just see and avoid any terrain until they get to above 6,600. So let's do that. So November 288 CRX-ray, verify you can maintain your own terrain obstruction avoidance up to 6,600. And if they said yes, November 288 CRX-ray, clear to the San Juan airport via leaving 6,600. Direct Joshi, direct, maintain 7,000. San Juan altimeter. 3001, all that kind of good stuff. So good job with that. No traffic for them, nothing in conflict with them. San Juan Center, Marriage at 8341, 900 miles south, Scapa. Well, good. That's awesome. That's position verification. That'll work. So I'd say a Marriage at 8341, San Juan Center, radar contacts, walk 4566, six, safe flight level. They did not give the altitude in their initial check in. So we are able to verify the mode C. I would focus and stay in that area since they are radar identified. 
even though the mode C is not validated, it is about to be. Maybe your marriage is real quick and hurries up and says flight level 390 before you can even queue up to verify because you have a pending traffic call, emerging target procedure, marriage A341, traffic, 12 o'clock, 17 miles, opposite direction, heavy Dreamliner, flight level 400. Avianca 021, traffic, 12 o'clock, 17 miles, opposite direction, heavy Boeing 767, flight level 390. I would address American 1293 requesting lower. That's fine. But look what you have coming your way, who is probably on frequency or about to be because they are, your, are under your data tag control, is Teal 05. Looks like they're on Route 4, definitely pointed to the northwest off of St. Croix. Teal has a seasonal base in St. Croix for hurricane season. Fun fact. American 1293, descend and maintain 17,000, the St. Croix altimeter. Very good, right, 17. Thinking outside the box, I would keep American 1293 on uh, frequency. Well, actually, we're actually working on everything combined, so that's fine. But if you're working just sector eight, it'd be fun to keep uh, American 1293 on frequency. So you pretend that you're working sector eight by yourself and do a point out. Perfect time for point out phraseology. You know, call up, put it on their scope. R2, R8, point out, R2. Over my was American 1293 is saying 110, direct St. Croix. So something like that. And let's get over to Tampa. Tampa 3455, heavy, if you want. If you think you're in the position now that you are officially providing approach control services with this clearance, it's always a weird semantic kind of the chicken versus the egg. Like, when does this aircraft become approach status when you have to start using heavy associated with it? I see French West 422 cutting across. Looks like they're direct Antex. I'd just be safe not to look at it. Tampa 3455 heavy descent and maintain 17,000. Barrington altimeter 3002. Information November. Verify having November. Something like that. That would take care of that. Also, too, with the Ameriget 8341, after you got the traffic call out of the way and mode C verified, you see in the top right-hand corner, we have the squat codes available to us in the tabular list. So also you can say Ameriget 8341 at SCAPA squat 4566, something like that. So great job with that. Let's keep it going. It's been a while since we've been in the radar environment in the whimsical world of Sector 2. And I'm sure you missed it. I know I sure did. So let's get to these dialogue boxes. Dan Watson Center, Jeff 78, climbing for level 150. Requesting lower, XOJet 523. Request lower, Leon 343. VFR to sink, good speed 103. San Juan Center, good speed 101. 14 East Gouda, flight level 165. VFR advisories to San Juan, DC 12. Requesting higher, Seaborne 4601. Okay, we have some things brewing here, so let's pause it and get your plan together. Awesome, so here we are back again. Welcome back from that pause. I'm sure you did fantastic. There are some things brewing here, but exciting stuff here in Sector 2. Yet again, nothing truly affecting air safety, maybe some efficiency items that we can take care of. So I'll tell you how I would have did it. So. Even though the order was first come, first serve, and you should adhere to that as much as possible, what am I interested in? Well, JetBlue 78 did call first, so let me get to them. JetBlue 78, San Juan Center, radar contact, 2-2 two, two miles southeast juice, say altitude, and they would come back. I just validated that mode C because they told me what they were climbing to, not what altitude they were out of. I would let them know that there's a 1,200 target there. Most likely it's that good speed that called us, one of the second to last aircraft to check in. And I would say JetBlue 788, traffic 11 o'clock, 10 miles, westbound, altitude indicates 16,500 type unknown, altitude unverified. I would immediately get to good speed 101, they're maintaining VFR, and they're just not in my airspace laterally, but uh, vertically they are, but uh, you know they're over Juliana, they're still far enough away that I could get the code going. Maybe I could do two things at once and start typing in what I heard, typing in in the micro yards Z, G, P, D, 101, PC, 12, EY, 1, SPLAT, SJU, and get a ticket going, get that squad code going. Uh, 
low hanging fruit, VFR descent, Goosby 103, Goosby 103, Roger, San Juan Altimeter 3001, something to that effect. XVJ 523 is descending in the Juliana. They're on Yankee 290, just for a little context there. And I see I have JetBlue 950, ah, creeping up, right? Probably on Lima 459 or at least the Red Kika. This is your 523, descend and maintain file 350, traffic 2 o'clock, 35 miles northbound, Airbus A320, level 340, expect Flugo at 110, 150, whatever in your mind, whatever you want to pretend that what was coordinated, so give them some context to it. Typically 950, traffic 11 to 12 o'clock, 35 miles south eastbound, citation, leaving flight level 410 for 350, something to that effect. I see I have Windward 046 uh, climbing to uh, 7, reference the JIP, or to my Leo 343 there. Leo 343, I, no reason why I can't swap out to do there. That aircraft, Windward 046, is established, direct Slugo. I'm talking to the aircraft as well. And as you know, as per the SOP, anything lower than 8,000 from that direction, landing B filing, will have to be APRAC. So 6,000 is usually where we start. So Leo 343 just going to maintain 6,000. And that's going to require me to call R3 and R7 to abrac that altitude. So let's practice that together. R3, R7, R2. Satellite. Aprac Leo 343. Saying the 6,000 from the east. I would say approved, I hope. Uh, let's, acknowledge, uh, let's acknowledge this climb request. Um, Two from Seaborne 4601, they're requesting higher. We could vector them out. We've done a video on that, vectoring aircraft to the southwest, but I think this would be a good opportunity for us just to uh, use that. So C14601, turn left heading 245 vector traffic, 12 o'clock, three zero miles, southeast bound Boeing 737. 19.5 for flight level 060. American 318 traffic, 12 o'clock, 35 miles opposite direction. Saab, turning southwest bound, flight level 50, something like that. You know, you can get away with uh, painting the picture for what's about to happen. Maybe when they start getting closer to each other and Seaborne starts creating some lateral separation, you can use pilot applied visual separation. Now let's get back to JetBlue. We can climb the aircraft. Well, I don't believe I did that. JetBlue said climb and about 340. And then by this time, hopefully Goodspeed would have a squat code, a strip presented to us by the a side or the D side, and the squat code would appear in the tabular list, and we would have an opportunity to say good speed uh, 101, squat 4566, traffic 6 o'clock, 11 miles, turning northwest bound Airbus A321, leaving flight level probably by that time, maybe leaving 100 to 340, something like that. So perfect, good job. This is an opportunity to practice. Your frequency changes for both Leo 343 and Goodspeed 103, possibly JetBlue 950, um, also American 318. You could pretend that the traffic passed, and you could pretend that those aircraft did see each other. Maybe use a little pilot by visual separation there. So yeah, great job with our first Sector 2 scenario. Let's keep it going. Here we are back in Sector 2. We have a whole bunch of aircraft here and some weather around Vetus. So this should make for an interesting uh Flashcard. Let's get right to the dialog boxes. San Juan Center, American 2295, 13 Southeast, Hillary, Flight 380. Flashbox, Sierra Bravo Echo, request frequency change. San Juan Center, Rick Air 4393, climbing Flight 340. San Juan Center, Delta 349, Flight 360. Nice. Very interesting. So let's get to it. Addressing things first come, first serve, no big deal. But what affects air traffic safety? is weather. So assuming that we have some time with only these four aircraft who made a conversation with us, right, created dialogue with us, I would know that they are there. I expect them to be there. They're coming from non-radar environment, so their separation, their positive separation was ensured by the D-side. I am not too worried about getting back to them right away. Also, they're not in my airspace yet which is fine. I have two things in particular brewing here, one being the weather affecting air traffic safety, and as we were distracted oh so pleasantly by the aircraft either checking in or requesting something, we have an overtake situation on American 2316 and Spirit Wings 101. A 60 knot overtake 
with a difference of roughly uh, about 7,000 feet of altitude, a little less than 7,000 feet. We need to get on that. So what would I do? I would say Spirit Wings 101 maintain 310 knots or greater. Possibly they're probably not going to be able to do it at that altitude, but maybe find a speed that they can at least do. Or American 2316, reduce speed to 290, then cross Slugo at flight level 290. Even though that wasn't the proper order to speed the, uh, well, it is the proper order. We were able to reduce the trailing aircraft first, and then we can speed up preceding aircraft depending upon what order still complying with chapter five. Spirit Wings 101 maintain 290 knots or greater until Slugo, something like that. Um, then the weather, because I took care of that speed adjustment first because we will be handing that aircraft off to Juliana while we'll be terminating services, but you get the picture. I don't want to hand them anything that would create a sandwich situation over Slugo having a stack of aircraft, so I want to take care of that now. I still have time to not only give the weather call to both Eiffel 201, Greenbird 250, and Goodspeed 111, but I have time to also prove any deviation that they might need. The only thing that's brewing there is if Eiffel 201 and Greenbird 2, well, let's not, not, not so much Greenbird, but who is landing Sam 1, by the way, and does not have a restriction yet, so hint, hint, you could have also did that too. But if Eiffel 201 wants to deviate, they're probably going to want to deviate to the northwest, and that might cause me to get uh, a little bit of heartburn getting tangled up with Goodspeed 111 as they proceed DFR into San Juan. But like I said, this is the beauty of these freeze frame scenarios where you can do what you want. This is your masterpiece. I'd like you to paint it. But let's talk weather. So I'm going to start off with Eiffel because he's going the fastest. They're going to hit the weather first. And there's also IFR making a restriction. Goodspeed 111, they're maintaining VFR. So if they don't see the weather yet, they will, and being VFR, they will avoid it like the plague. That's just an inference, but don't worry. We're still going to give them a weather call, just not first. Eiffel 201, area of moderate to extreme precipitation, 12 o'clock, 3, 3 miles. Tops and bases are unknown. Area, 2, 0 miles in diameter. As you see, I didn't have a trend on it, so I didn't say... Uh, way it was going looks like it's northwest but maybe an update in a couple minutes i'll see a trend on it so yeah you can do that try to have everything in there good speed two or correction uh good speed 111 area of moderate to extreme precipitation 10 to 11 o'clock to five miles moving northwest bound tops and bases are unknown area two two miles in diameter perfect and greenbird 250 Cross Vetus at maintain 1 1000, the same one altimeter 2992. Area of moderate to extreme precipitation 11 to 12 o'clock, 40 miles. Moving northwest bound. Tops and bases are unknown. Area 22 miles in diameter. Perfect. Now we have that. Everybody's in the know about the weather. Maybe they're formulating their next request for a possible deviation, which is fine. Let's take care of low hanging fruit there. Fox Rosters here, Bravo Echo, radar service terminated, squawk VFR, frequency change approved, or Fox Oscar Sierra Bravo Echo, radar service terminated. Montag Julian approach, 128.9 or 5 for additional advisories, something like that. Now, let's radar, let's get these aircraft radar identified. Let's go San Juan Center, Big Air 43, 90, climbing 340. Big Air 43, 93, San Juan Center, radar contact, say flight level leaving, say altitude leaving, something like that. Uh, Sam 1 Center, American 229513 Southeast, Ellery Flight Level 380. That is an awesome check-in, and we are going to reward them with a basic American 2295 Sam 1 Center radar contact, Ellery Squawk 4533. Traffic, 12 o'clock, 35 miles opposite direction, heavy Boeing 767, Flight Level 370. And we'll address Delta. Sam 1 Center, Delta 349, Flight Level 360. Delta 349, Sam 1 Center, Squawk 4722 at Ellery. Right? No need for a primary means of radar identification. We will get the auto acquisition soon enough and be able to radar identify Delta. And we would also give Delta traffic for Yukon 401. And then we would give traffic for Yukon 401 in the form of American 2295 and Delta 349. Also to American 823, merging target procedure with uh, Delta 349 as well. So a whole bunch of traffic calls have been made there. Fantastic job with that. Last but certainly not least here, back in Sector 2, we see we have multiple aircraft here. So let's begin with the dialog boxes. 
Good Speed 34 requests IFR to San Juan. Oh, joy. Wonderful. San Juan, Yankee Victor 4466 requests lower. Requesting higher, American 2405. San Juan Center, American 943, climbing 10,000. Okay, let's get started here. What is affecting air traffic safety right now? In my opinion, two things kind of stick out. First, American 943 is on the Palco. I have track control of Wiggins 8105 and they're on frequency, but they are not in my airspace. I have two aircraft that are in conflict as it stands in the form of American 943 on the Palco 7 and Wiggins 8105 southeast bound, probably going direct Dandy or direct Modix. Both aircraft are with me and my track control, but I do not have possession because they're not in my airspace. So this is going to require a call to R7. This is what I would do first. I'm just going to vector American 12, um, excuse me, American 943 to the southwest, maybe on a 230 heading, and get them climbing up and over Wiggins 8105 with the potential to use pilot applied visual separation. There's no need to stop American 943's climb right now if you are going to immediately get on the phone and talk to the satellite controller. I believe that you can assign American 943 flight level 320 and also in the same transmission upon getting control, have the aircraft on a vector. So that's my first answer. The second thing that's affecting air safety is possibly a traffic alert, certainly a traffic advisory on that VFR aircraft. Looks like they're flying the radials of green 633 and sea breeze 302 at 110. I have no idea if that altitude is even valid on that 1200 code aircraft, let alone if they are cruising or continuing in a climb. So here goes what I would do. American I, I would call satellite R2. Satellite request control, American 943 for turns. Your control, American 943 San Juan Center. Turn right heading 240, vector traffic, climb maintain file 320. Okay, good, I took care of that. Seabreeze 302, traffic 12 o'clock, 10 miles, opposite direction, altitude indicates flight level 097, altitude unverified, type unknown. Okay, that's the best I can do for now. Possibly if it were to progress into anything more, if the separation would continue to diminish both head on and Vertically, traffic alert, Seabreeze 302, advise you turn right immediately. Traffic, 12 o'clock, 7 miles, opposite direction, altitude indicates flight level 105, altitude unverified, type unknown, you know, something like that to get the attention of the frequency, have everybody shut up and get Seabreeze 302's attention, take a control action, and give your best suggestion at the time. But I, I don't think it would come into that. Possibly that aircraft will call you for advisory. You never know. Okay, so we took care of that. Uh, what do we have here now? American 2405 once higher. We see we have a United 1287 at 322, but making a restriction at a low blow for 21. I would say American 2405, either stand by, maybe you don't feel comfortable climbing the aircraft with what you have going on, monitoring the American 943's vector and the brewing situation between Dandy and Gabar with the VFR to IFR conflict, but you can also very well vector American 2405 to the west and be none the wiser. American 2405, fly heading 280, fine heading, climbing tape off 320, and that 280 heading will certainly clear uh, United 1287's course on Yankee 355 southeast bound or Yankee 290 for that matter too. Yankee Victor 4466, Yankee Victor 4466 uh, is requesting a lower. And this is my next call. You might think, hey, what about good speed requesting IFR? If they're good, if they are VFR at this point and have not encountered IFR conditions, which they would have to tell me, or it's strongly suggested that they do so, then it's on request. Because I have to do, as you know, we've done a video on this, that we have to do some investigating, some snooping around, an information search for the IFR flight plan, possibly even put in an IFR flight plan if none exists. So we have some work ahead of us. They are very far away from San Juan. As long as they are not encountering 
IFR conditions, which we would probably be able to see with our next rad radar, which we are not depicting, this isn't a priority right now in this grand scheme of things. It's not like we are ignoring them. We are going to get back to them as soon as we can. So here we go. Is Yankee Victor 4466 in my airspace? No, unfortunately not. All right, R2, request control Yankee Victor 4466 for descent. Your control, perfect. We got that out of the way. Yankee Victor 4466, descent and maintain, flight level 210. Y21, because King Air 1093 Zulu is cutting across. You could possibly get traffic if you wanted. I have a traffic merging target procedure between Orange 366 and Air France 368. And then I would get back to... I would say a Wiggins 8105. I would give them a traffic call because they probably can't see American 943 yet, especially if my American 943 is going to go to that broad southwest heading. But at least let them know, hey, there's somebody curling all curling on up northwest bound that you might want to take a look out for and maybe start massaging, start peppering the idea of pilot applied visual separation on behalf of Wiggins 8105 or the crew of American 943. And there we go. So let's pretend everything aligned perfectly and good speed 34 had an IFR flight plan on file. So I would follow this order. I would DM departure message and request flight plan transfer to Sam Juan or Arts First, as you call it. That IFR flight plan, boom, presented to us would be a new squawk code and the aircraft would start producing strips for all downline affected facilities. I would say good speed 34, and there we go. I would rattle off the clearance because it's active in the NAS, and it is perfectly valid. They are at a safe altitude. Everything like that is fine. Good speed 34, clear to the San Juan Airport via direct VITAS, direct descend and maintain 16,000, San Juan Altimeter 3001. Reset transponder squawk 3344, right? Because we need to give a new squawk code that has MSAW processing, right? If VFR was entered in by the micro yards local VFR function or VFR exists in the assigned altitude portion of the data tag, then the aircraft will not have MSAW processing. So let's get them a code that enables MSAW processing, get the Z out of there, and immediately upon hearing the readback, make sure that it is correct, remove the flight plan on Zulu, Gulf Papa Delta 34. Z, good speed 34, remove that, and you have perfectly followed through. Fantastic job. You can practice your traffic calls here, communication changeovers, and so on and so forth. Fantastic job. Wonderful. Well, hey, welcome back. It's good to see you guys again. It was fun narrating that. Believe me, it didn't take nearly as many takes to, uh, because uh, no weird pauses here in the little video viewfinder here. It's a lot easier just to narrate. But anyway, fantastic. We're reusing the Duke Nukem crew image because all these guys are either envious of your wonderful talents or absolutely proud of you or just pumped to be uh, in your aura. Right, working with you, right? These are the all stars that make it happen. You're an all star, you did a fantastic job with that. Great job with the flashcards today, guys. I always enjoy this, it's always fun brewing up and making scenarios for you to think your way through. It's a fun puzzle, it's a great mental exercise, and I cannot wait to do the next one. Hopefully, we'll be able to dive into some more concepts here, more particular specialized situation that are kind of central and specific to San Juan Center's airspace, and I can't wait to share those with you as they come online. Fantastic job, guys. Always making me proud. Remember, may your separation be just like your attitude. Positive. Steve here, wishing you nothing but the best. See you soon in the next video. Adios.